What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Yacrates, and this will be your review for Basketball Wives. The season and the episode will be in the title because I just don't remember, and this has pretty much left me exhausted. So forgive me. <clears throat> so, all right. So we got uh, Taggy Jackie um, saying, even though we've gone, and so she's, I'm sorry, so she's, She's talking with Malaysia. I'm a just I'm finna sum up a lot of this just so I can get to what I need to get to so I can get off of here. Long story short, between them, the issues that I'ma just say with that. So she says to to Malaysia, I'm gonna be nice to say names today. Though we've gone through things, you're still my sister. Malaysia, like, am I your sister? How many times do I have to keep you know uh letting you F me over? Jackie says, uh, feel, um, so she feels that, uh, Malaysia did feel like Jackie was spreading rumors. Malaysia is like, no, is I'm not upset. Like, I'm not saying that you were lying. I'm saying that I'm just upset because you spread it and perpetuated something that was totally false. That was it. They made up. Um, so Naya and Noria, cause they're still there while this conversation is happening. They asked for a tour of the house. They had the tour of the house. And then, you know, they're asked about what's going on in the other house. They bring up the conversation that they had with OG. Now, based off of how this all played itself out, they could have just not said anything because it's not like whatever. They pretty much just share, you know, their conversation with OG. You know, the fact that, you know, she was put down by one of her teachers and that she had broken down and cried. Uh, Master Splinter and her confessional was happy to know that, um, you know, the new girls were able to break the code and feels like, okay, well, now I can talk to OG almost like, okay, well, y'all help teal the soil so I can just come over there and do what it is that I need to do. And, and then she says, you know, she tells the girls that it's nice to humanize uh, her passions. Fuck you mean humanize her passions? Like, again, it's just those little slick, sly shit that is said that just doesn't help and lends itself. Okay, anyway, I'm I'm not doing this tonight. I'm not doing this tonight. And she says that she's ready to understand her, but there has to be some understanding given back her way. Again, it's always, I need, the, whatever. Fuck ever. Oh. Really? Hold on. Okay. Software sounds stupid. <laughs> so you got Jen and OG talking, and there's some awkward energy there because of what happened the night before. But even what happened the night before, OG wasn't even getting a lot of belligerent with her. It was just, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Where it, she's just, uh, it wasn't nothing. And I, and I swear on everything I love, I feel like Jennifer has been not only talking with Chris, but other women, and has been, you know, plotting and trying to find a way to start some ish to get over into the other house, because she even low-key said this episode that she is tired of being in this house. Uh, OG is uh, jazzing up a basketball person she has. Jen starts talking about um, her car, uh, her ex and the son of the car and the project and all that. OG low-key really ain't bad. <laughs> and also real shit if if the way that it was edited is exactly what happened then OG yeah that was kind of fucked up like I get it y'all not feeling each other but don't sit here and spark up a conversation if you're really not trying to entertain the conversation but she came off as being very dismissive and uh, disinterested so then Jackie um, pretty much lets the girls know because they're still over at the other house pretty much just kind of want everybody to heal and kumbaya because that's the assignment that she's been given by Shawnee the girls um, then at this point, you know, get to know each other more or less. Well, now they all for the most part. It's like, okay, well, what is this? And what do you do? And how is this? And blah, blah, blah. Who did you date? And blah, blah, blah. So I believe that it was Nia who revealed that she dated Lance. And it was like, who? Furby's ex? And now this is going to be a topic of conversation. So the girls um, are told that Phoebe may come, but because she had uh, come into contact with someone that had COVID, she has thus been quarantining, but both her and her children's tests have come back native, so good for that. 
So the girls bring up, you know, their father. So when they heard the COVID thing, they bring up their father and how, you know, he recently passed. Noria breaks down. Master Splinter um, shares, you know, OG experience with the other women based off of what she was told by Noria and Nia. Okay, I, I want y'all to to understand how this thing is playing itself out. Um, so Cole 45 shares, you know, her, what the hell? I don't even know what the hell I wrote there. Oh, shares that her grandmother, uh, she said this in her confession that her grandmother was lighter than her and that she had a problem with dark skinned women, but finally came around when her granddaughter, which I would assume is Kristen's daughter was born. A lot that was left out of that story, but okay. But but again, these are think conversations that could be had with OG to try to say like we may not necessarily understand what you're going through in this group, but we do have these um, instances of racism and colorism that we have gone through trying to reach her that way. I just don't believe that it's happened that way. So Cool Forty Five feels that um feels they should try again but with a different approach they being her and malaysia which i'm still trying to figure out why is it that the women that need to have the conversation ain't having the conversation but everybody else is trying to have a conversation with og almost like let me test the waters let me see what i can get let me grab some information to bring back i i don't i'm not liking it i'm really not Nia and Noria get back and then they share, you know what it is that they had said to the other women. OG is annoyed and she pretty much said, I don't want you speaking about me to those other women. Now, did she have a bit of a tone? Yes, she did. But compared to how OG has came at these women in prior, not not those two girls, but the women in prior seasons, that was light light. And I, now again, yes, yeah, she opened up to him. And I know a lot of people will argue, well, why open up to someone if you don't want them to blah, blah, blah. But, but here's the reality of some shit. Even if somebody does open up to me, what I'm not going to do, especially if I just met you, is I'm not, one, I'm, I don't like talking about other people's business. That, that ain't me. Even if I feel that I can help the situation, number one, that ain't me. Two, I'm not going to sit here and take some sensitive information back to the ops, the people that she don't get along with. Not finna do that. Not finna do, because that's giving them leverage amongst every other other stuff. So I understood the frustration. Now, could OG have approached it differently? She could have, but in the moment, those were raw emotions. I'm going to skip ahead in time, just to let y'all know that she went and rehashed this conversation and came at them just a little bit differently. I just want y'all to understand this is this and blah, blah, blah. And they understood it, but it seemed like from there, they already had made up in their mind. Okay, never mind. I'm not going to do that because everybody will say, oh, I'm just, okay, anyway, whatever. Um, But Nia whole thing, and she feels that OG can communicate better and with a different tone. Could be. Could be. So the girls work out, and this is Jackie's house. Janet and OG are doing little bits of bigger and back and forth. Again, I swear, I just think that this is Jen trying to have a problem with OG to justify why I'm not fucking with you. OG, okay, so I already talked about OG talking to the other girls, but when she talked to them, uh, I believe it was Noria in her confessional, says that she's over OG with her bossy behavior. So they're saying bossy behavior, and she's loud and all this other stuff. Trigger words, yet again. And, okay, all right, not going to beat this. I'm just going to give you all the rest of this review because I'm about to get irritated, upset, and, yeah. So, Jen tells Jackie that she can't be in the house with OG because OG is a problem. OG is the problem. So, Mass Splint and Evil call Phoebe and pretty much tell Phoebe about, I believe it was Nia, the one that actually stepped with her ex, and Phoebe's talking about so she's a stalker. You know, she'll create different accounts. 
and saw me on IG. She didn't send me porn and all this other stuff and blah, 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 blah. I find a lot of that very hard to believe. And I also find it hard to believe because normally these shows are good with producing some sort of a receipt. We didn't see not a one. So now we got breakfast back at Jackie's house. Jackie shares that Jen is mad. Didn't really go into detail because Jen is the only one that is not there. Um, Mr. Egg comes down with her mask on because she says she doesn't want to talk about anything and she has nothing nice to say. Malaysia and Kristen discuss going to talk with OG. Nia and Nori in a completely separate scene. It seems like they're like on a on a second floor balcony or whatever. And they talk about OG being stubborn and they didn't like her tone. Now, y'all had already had a follow-up conversation from the night before around breakfast time. And if y'all really felt this way on some real shit, why didn't y'all just go to her and just be like, can we talk to you for a moment? Like, we, I understand everything that you're saying. I understand that you are upset because we went back and told some information that we couldn't have, oh, that we shouldn't have said. But from, from now moving forward, can you be cognizant of the tone that you're using when you're talking to some people because it can be very off-putting. Something such as that. I'm I'm just saying, maybe not those words, but some along the fucking lines, but rather than have this conversation, y'all are having it with the cameras. And one even said, ooh, can she hear us? Okay, all right. Uh, na, 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 na. And then it shared that, I believe it was Nia didn't like that OG uh, have brought up Phoebe so many times. And here, here's some other shit, y'all. And I keep saying, and I say this in a lot of my reviews, like, effective communication solves a lot of shit. All you had to do was just be like, OG, I really don't want to talk about that right now. But here's the other part. If you didn't want that to be... A, all right. Because I'm about to go down that particular rabbit hole. But you, she could have easily just said, I don't want to have this conversation. That's a sensitive subject. Phoebe's not here, blah, blah. But you could have shut it down. You... And this is one of those where you don't have to entertain a conversation that you don't want to entertain. Anyway. Um, so Jackie is having like a game night type of thing, even though it's not nighttime. It's like afternoon, but doing some games and whatnot. Malaysia and Kristen come over to talk with OG. Malaysia says to her at the reunion, she didn't, uh, she didn't know what she was trying to say. Because you, you weren't trying to understand her, nor were you trying to hear her. You were trying to stay cool with the click that you was clicking with, okay? And then says, maybe my approach was off because I was taken aback. Your approach was you literally just attacked her verbally. And, and you especially did that because of the situation, how she was in a separate you know, room from you. But OG was one of the ones where after you threw that table at Jennifer that she was trying to keep you calm and say, no, nah, you got kids or whatnot. I can't let you go out like that. But OK. All right. That's cool. And she just wants to understand, especially if anything came from her direction. OG gets up and she wipes her eyes because she has a lot on her plate. And I understood this. And I, I, I was on Twitter and I saw a lot of people, you know, had a lot to say. And he, here's what I'm going to say. I, I think the reason that I am giving OG so much is because I've been there. Because everyone keeps saying, well, if everybody has an issue, then it's you and X, Y, and Z. Look, I've been the black sheep of my family. <laughs> I still am one of, but I'm not currently the one that everybody has shunned. But definitely a black sheep nonetheless. Growing up, I have always spoke uh, spoke my mind, okay? I was born to an Aries, which is my mother. She's very outspoken, and I am the most like her. My eldest brother is the most like, like our father. Middle brother is, you know, a nice combination of the two. I'm more or less like my mother. So I get my outspokenness and my voice from her. And then just me being the December Capricorn that I am, I'm going to talk my shit. So I talked a lot of shit. And it was more or less me defending myself because all of my cousins outside of my immediate cousins are older than me. And I'm going to defend myself verbally. Well, that quickly turned into them creating this narrative that I am so difficult. All I do is argue with people and just levels of shit where I'm now being painted to be Lucifer. Satan, I understand that in everybody's story, you're going to play Lucifer slash Satan in someone's story. But the fact that this has been perpetuated for years 
And then when friends of the family are introduced and girlfriends and boyfriends and all this other stuff, rather than someone getting the opportunity to know me just for me, they're coming in with these lies that have been spoken about me. And then the moment that somebody says something remotely off the wall and I calmly try to correct them now it's oh my gosh he's our it, it's a it was a whole fucking thing and that has been years and then i even got to a point where my cousin god bless her soul when she was still living was saying if you get to show them the y'all that i know they'll come to love you like i love you so now i didn't went what five four or five years of trying to open up trying to be like okay let me try things differently and yet still nothing still getting you know shit shoved in the heart you know capacity that's right here that i'm trying to get these sons of bitches to see like i'm really not as evil as a person as y'all really try to make me out to be like i'm really cool peoples <laughs> and it's real mess of the people that i went to school with people that i've you know worked with people that i've served with have all gotten to see who i truly am yet y'all can't get past it because y'all want to continuously paint me to be someone and someone that i am not and I'm always happy to defend it, even now being back in the mix and me holding on to certain ideals that is certain people that I'm not finna just get along to get along with that we need to sit down and have a conversation and squash shit like grown men. But I'm being told that, no, you just need to let it go. I don't need to let shit go. And if the other person don't want to have a conversation, then all that this person going to get is a hello, not even a fucking goodbye. So I understand the frustration of wanting to hold on to your morals and your standards because the moment you let go to try to get along and then try to go back to it, then you're going to be paying to be a real fucked up person. So this is why I understand OG and this is why I connect with her. If y'all want to call it bias, that's perfectly fine. It's my channel, it's my opinion. All right. So OG, you know, just... Yeah, so I already said she's overwhelmed and she has to constantly, you know, uh, defend her, you know, herself, her ideals, standards and all that. Malaysia hugs OG, which is cool. And she wants to know how can we move on from back then and move to a better place right now? Which I understood it. But the thing is, they hadn't even had a chance to have a conversation about what the fuck happened then it's just how can we just move on without acknowledging the fact that y'all collectively did some fuck shit so og said well one passing the blame cannot continue which i agree telling someone how to feel cannot continue which i agree now she said this and she pulled it and i ain't even mad if she said it she says i feel the conversations are happening now because it's been over a year and a half, and now these conversations are happening, and I feel that it's because you all cannot handle the backlash that you all are receiving. And OG doubles down and said, I still feel there is colorism in this group. And it goes off. So, yeah, I'm about to go ahead and upload this video and go over to Jaylee's channel. So that's it. That's all I got. Rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys later. Peace out. Holla at you, boy.